What is the world's ultimate car? Who better to ask than the world's greatest designers, engineers and journalists? This is their choice. Cars that break rules, push technology and achieve the impossible. Now brace yourself. It's time for Ultimate Road Rally Cars. Imagine a car with race car performance that can travel over any terrain that you can buy at your local showroom. That's an Ultimate Road Rally Car. You can race them at the World Rally Championships or you can drive them to the shops. They are simply the toughest, most demanding and exhilarating cars ever made. The fact that you can turn a conventional car into something that does the most unimaginable things but still have a connection with the car you've got at home in the garage. There's a reason why all rally navigators are chain smokers. <laughs> no, it'll go like zero to 100 in about this much space and has brakes that'll haul you down so fast you'll get a nosebleed. But as we count down the five greatest road rally cars of all time, only one can be top dog. Only one can be the ultimate road rally car. We start our countdown with a car that will blow your mind. You better hide behind the sofa. In at number five, the Ford RS200. RS for Rally Sport 200, because we had to make 200 of them. They're bulletproof, you know, they, they take it all. They were wonderful cars. I mean, the sort of things that make your eyes light up. For 150,000, you could get one of these vehicles, which is a lot of money back then. Um, 30,000 of that alone accounted for the engine. And by the way, the 600 horsepower engine in a little teeny weeny lightweight body would do zero to 60 in under three seconds. One, two, three. That's the rumor. That's how long it took for a 1985 rally prepped Ford RS200 to go from naught to 60 miles per hour from a 2.1 litre engine, which produced, and this is really gonna fry your mind, 650 brake horsepower. Still not impressed? Put it this way, the fastest production road car ever made is the McLaren F1. That has a six litre engine. The RS200 is a third of that, but its turbocharger is so effective, it can hit 60 miles per hour over half a second faster than the fastest road car on earth which may explain why the Essex Police Force in England toyed with the idea of using the RS200 as a patrol car. I wonder why they didn't. You know, when you're over 600 horsepower, then it's almost a case of if you blink or you sneeze when you're driving that quick, you're likely to be able to lose control. Uh, uh, now, as you no doubt have guessed, rally cars are not the prettiest thing on God's green earth. But this may surprise you. As far as rally cars go, the RS is considered something of a design classic. It does have this thing of looking like a submarine. It's got a very unusual quality about it like that. The car has grown on people and it's still collected today. And what's this all about? Well, contrary to the car's boxy front, the turbo engine is actually mid-mounted here. And this is in actual fact the air intake to keep the engine cool. Cool. Now Ford had this mind-blowing engine with an acceleration more akin to a Formula One car. So what happened? The RS200 won its first rally, a, a relatively small British event, finished I think third on the Swedish rally. We got plans for the development of it because it's still in its very early stages and suddenly the plug was cut and pulled on the category. The RS was part of what is commonly regarded as Rally's golden period, the Group B years. During the 80s, manufacturers were allowed to produce fire-breathing 600-plus brake horsepower engines. The results were jaw-dropping. Fans lined dirt tracks and roads inches away from cars hurtling round corners at Formula One speeds. We have had also, of course, at this, in these times, a lot of, uh, of um, accidents. People, the crowds are really crazy, crazy, crazy. I asked my drivers how you can drive, and they said, no, no, it's only bushes for us, only trees. Huh? We don't uh, see these um, people. If we think these are people, we cannot drive. And finally, in 1986, the inevitable happened. In a series of accidents, both spectators and drivers were killed. And overnight, the entire group was canceled, never to race again.
we were all enjoying it. You know, it was the time when it was exciting. The noise, as I said before, the, the flames, everything there was, was fantastic. Rules and regulations are such that they restrict the cars to basically 300 horsepower now, but ultimately nowhere near as powerful as they were in Group B. But that doesn't explain why the RS200 is number five on our list and not number one. Well, remember that $30,000 turbocharged 2.1 litre engine? The 600 horsepower engine in a little teeny weeny lightweight body got exactly 10 hours at full throttle. <laughs> 10 hours, and it was toast. That's right. You get 10 hours of full throttle fun with the 200's engine, and then it's a goner. Which may be a good note to move on to the next car on our list. In at number four, a car that when originally released couldn't even reach 100 miles per hour. You've come a long way, baby. It's the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. You can't help but be grateful to Mitsubishi for bringing that car at a reasonable price, the huge amount of horsepower to the American family. I can just see the 16-year-old going, it's a four-door sedan. It's from Mitsubishi, so it's incredibly reliable. And then going, yes, when he convinced mom and dad to buy it. They've become very successful cars out of very, very boring standard cars, you know. So the idea of taking one of those and turning it into kind of this tarmac raiding monster is really interesting in the start. Here's a quick lesson in rally speak. If a car is called an Evo, it stands for evolution. Imagine, if you will, Darwin's theory of evolution on steroids. You take the very dull bento box 75 brake horsepower Lancer, a car so dull that it can't even reach 100 miles per hour, and you turn it into a real fire-breathed, exhaust-sucking, turbocharged Tasmanian devil. With a top speed in excess of 150 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of 4.4 seconds. All from a two litre engine that costs less than $30,000. You just cannot believe that a car can be sold to the public that can do these things. There are plenty of fast cars like the Ferrari, Lamborghini, and uh, Porsche. But of course, um, they're expensive. Even um, I can't buy one, unfortunately. We want to provide cars at um, low cost, but with high performance. And God bless you for it, Mr. Mitsubishi. The Evo may never hit 200 miles per hour, but the vast majority of supercars in this world won't either, for the very simple reason that there aren't any public roads available to do it on. But the Evo can take a corner faster than just about any other car in existence. That's probably where we spend most of our time in, in terms of uh, performance. We try to get the car to be as quick as possible, not necessarily as fast as possible. Because uh, on the, all the rally circuits we deal with, they're all quite tight and narrow, and you need to have a good handling car and very, very uh, quick response to accelerate along the straights. Now the best place to put the engine for handling and performance is the centre of the car. But that doesn't allow much room for the rest of the family, so the engine has to go here. But the clever noggins at Mitsubishi want to ensure maximum performance, so they've stripped off as much weight as possible. Everything from the aluminium roof, to the unique lightweight alloy wheels, and the carbon fibre spoiler is about making the car as light as possible. That way, all the power from the engine goes straight onto the road for maximum acceleration and speed. Plus, the lighter the car, the easier it is to change direction. The end result of all this weight saving is a car with pedestrian looks that's capable of jaw-dropping performance. This car is amazing, but nobody knows it. So, we've decided to illustrate the car's true potential by putting Nigel, uh, comfortable Evo owner and his car in the hands of Daniel Solar, Mitsubishi's superstar rally driver. Now, keep a very close eye on Nigel's face. Now that look of fear is Nigel having second thoughts about the wisdom of putting his brand new Evo 